Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this truly is the final video in my transformation series. In this video, I will be sharing with you some of the things that I experienced, lessons learned, maybe some tips that I might give to people that are starting off on a keto journey, and some of the things that maybe I didn't do that I wish I had done. In terms of some of the side effects, good and bad, that I've experienced in keto. First, I've noticed I fart not very much at all anymore. And I used to, I think, a lot. I, I seem to recall a lot of farting going on. And now it's, it's a rarity for me. So, I don't know, depending on your sense of humor, maybe that's a pro, maybe that's a con. Also, over the years, I didn't get rid of any of the clothes that I was growing out of. My wife would say, we could give those to charity, you know, and I would say, I'll get, I'll get back into them. Trust me, one day I'll get back into them. And I said this for the better part of 20 years. I had pairs of slacks that were 10 or more years old. There was, there was dust on them, on the uh, portion of them where they hung over the hanger. They, they'd been in there for so long. I think some of them still had tags on them. And I found that now I fit into these. I'm back down to the point that a pair of slacks or jeans with a 32 inch waist, I can slip off without unbuttoning. I haven't been able to do that since college. I also have a lot of clothes now that are way, way too big on me. And I'm gonna have to start cleaning out the closet in the new year and donating some stuff to charity because it just, it these things just look ridiculous on me. I look like a little boy wearing his dad's clothes. So a lesson learned there is as you're going through your transformation, put a little money aside every week because you're gonna need some new clothes. Another side effect that occurred to me as a result of rapid weight loss is some loose skin around the you know, belly, even on the back. You know, I, I reach back and I've got a jiggly skin on my back. It's like I've got this sort of uh, deflated inner tube around my lower abdomen, and it's gradually going away, but be prepared for that. In terms of keto breath, the acetone sort of smell that some people get breath-wise, I have not noticed that myself. Periodically, when I've gone out of keto and I come back into keto, I get a, a smell in my sinuses that I can't quite describe, but it's like I'm smelling my own snot. And I only get it as I'm going into keto, I don't get it afterwards. Now I believe one of the things that perhaps mitigates keto breath is eating a lot of green leafy vegetables. Chlorophyll has a natural tendency to cleanse the breath. So if, if you're eating a lot of vegetables on keto, maybe you do not have a problem with keto breath. Another super positive thing I used to sweat a lot. I mean, I would sweat just sitting. Sweating was sort of my natural state. And I would sweat when I was sleeping. I would sweat so bad, I had to have three pillows. And every night, I would basically sweat up one side of a pillow, flip it over, sweat that side up, cycle that one down to the floor, grab a fresh pillow. Pretty gross. Do not sweat, hardly at all anymore. That is fantastic. On the flip side, I'm also a lot colder than I used to be. My wife used to love to cuddle up you know, next to me in bed in the winter because I was so warm. Now I'm cold. My hands are cold. When I'm changing the diaper on my grandson, he does not like that at all. I gotta really try and get him warm before I change his diaper. I mentioned that uh, blood pressure has gone way down. I'm now down onto a single dose of lisinopril per day, and I suspect that when I go back to my doctor, we could be getting off of that. I'm also dialing back on my acid reflux medication. I'd been taking acid reflux meds for probably 15 years. Now I have dialed back to the minimum dosage of pantoprazole, and I'm only taking it two or three times a week. I'm probably going to wean myself off of that completely in the new year just because I'm not getting any sort of reflux anymore. Finally, my alcohol tolerance, and I had mentioned before I used to be a fairly heavy drinker, my alcohol tolerance 
is way low. I'm a total lightweight now. And find that, frankly, I just, I don't derive enjoyment from that, the sensation of having a buzz or being drunk anymore. I just, it doesn't appeal to me. If I have a gulp of, of hard liquor, I feel it now. So what I've got back there on the bar, that's probably a lifetime supply for me at this point. In terms of some lessons learned, some of these are things I would have done differently, others I'm glad that I did and I want to share. First off, make sure that you have some convenient keto snack foods available, especially early on when you haven't yet built up the, the disassociation with food, I guess, that would allow you to do intermittent fasting and, and not have the cravings that perhaps you're used to having. So make sure you have things like fat bombs, nuts, pork rinds, keto crackers, Beef sticks. If you buy beef sticks, though, make sure you look at the macros. A lot of them have added sugar. Cheese. Also, cheese has been a savior for me whenever I think it's time that I gotta, gotta, gotta have a snack. I would also suggest keeping a journal. And you can do this handwritten, you can do it in Word, do it on your tablet, whatever you want to do. I do this daily, and I capture what I ate, where I felt like maybe I maybe fell short or could have been better, how I felt physically, how I felt emotionally, I track my weight and my ketones. And it's something then that I can go back on, I can look at, I can see patterns if I see that I'm not losing weight. And at some point I can go back and revisit this and sort of refeel what my journey was like. In addition to journaling, Another recommendation I would make is take lots of pictures of yourself along the way. It will not be a proud moment for you, especially that very first picture. You're going to probably be a little bit embarrassed by it. Do it anyway. You will kick yourself if you don't. When you get done with this journey and you look back at yourself, it is going to be a different person to you. And seeing what you used to look like is going to be such a strong motivator that will keep you on course and help you sustain the accomplishment that you've made. When I look at pictures of me from a year ago, I honestly don't believe that I'm the same person. So trust me on this one. Take the pictures. You don't need to show them to anyone, but you'll be glad that you took them. Would encourage you to use Carb Manager and a blood glucose slash ketone monitor. I mentioned that before. At least until you've hit a point where you feel you've kind of dialed in what affects you and what doesn't affect you and the quantities of certain carbs that you can eat. A question that I get a lot from people is about alcohol because I've talked about my old drinking days and in videos behind me you see wine racks or you see liquor bottles. I drank a bit during my keto journey. Not a lot, but I know that if I hadn't had anything to drink, my progress would have gone faster. You need to make your own decision. But what I will tell you is that even if you're drinking essentially zero carb alcohol, that's still calories and it can affect your judgment in terms of what you think you're going to eat or how much of it you're going to eat. You'll have the most success by just steering clear of that as much as possible. I would also say the more pure or clean your keto is, the more successful you're going to be. The more rapidly you're going to see the weight loss and some of the health benefits. I found that probably within my first month, I needed to have a little bit of dirty keto. That I couldn't be so strict on my keto diet that it felt like a diet, that it felt like something I wasn't gonna be able to sustain long-term. I have certainly cleaned up since then, so I've steered away from some of the bad fats, the vegetable oil, corn oil, canola oil, in place of healthier fats. I've gotten away from some of the not so good for you sweeteners. 
but I still have some dirt on my keto. And I'm okay with that. It keeps me sane and it keeps this sustainable for me and it's never knocked me out of ketosis. But you make your own decision on how clean or dirty you want your keto to be. Cool part, you're gonna lose weight regardless. The last thing, and this is something I didn't have and I wish I did, is have a partner or support network on your journey. It is, it's been a real struggle for me. As I mentioned earlier, there's almost never a time when someone is not making a meal or a snack in my kitchen. Whether it's my son or my daughter, or my grandson's mother or my wife, somebody is always in there eating and snacking. And there's never a shortage of cookies and crackers and chips and pastries and things like that around the house. So it requires a lot more willpower out of me, I think, to avoid that stuff. And I feel very envious when I see some of these YouTube keto couples like Matt and Mega over at Keto Connect. I wish I, wish I had that sort of support mechanism. So I encourage you to try and find something like that yourself. probably want to get your hands on some electrolytes, whether these are electrolyte packets. If you do get electrolyte packets, make sure you take a look to see that there's no sugar added. Or you can get pills. I've used sports salts. I also picked up some of the perfect keto electrolyte formula during Black Friday. Really like that. I found that when I wasn't taking these electrolytes, I was getting a lot of cramps, especially in my feet. You know, you get two toes that just kind of just stick together like that or in my calves, or the worst is a yawn cramp. When you yawn and you cramp right here, that is pretty much the most horrible sensation I'm aware of. So get yourself some electrolyte pills. Lastly, and I had thought about maybe making this a separate video, perhaps I will as a follow-up to this as one of the episodes of my video podcast, but in talking with people, about keto. And you're going to want to talk about it. There's a joke. How do you know if someone's on keto? They tell you. You're going to feel really good. You're going to feel excited. You're going to want to share the story of your keto journey. I would advise you to kind of resist. And here's why. You'll probably have about a third of the people that are curious. They're interested in maybe learning more about keto. You'll have about a third that when they say, you look great, what are you doing? They just want a quick answer. It's, it's small talk. And you can just tell them, well, it's all about moderation and that will end the conversation. Then you have the people that want to fight you. And they will throw everything they've heard in the media against you. They will tell you, oh my God, you're not eating any vegetables. You're going to die. The reality is, I'm eating more vegetables now than I did pre-keto, and the vegetables I'm eating are a lot better for me. A lot of green vegetables, a lot of cruciferous vegetables. Oh, well, it's such a high-fat diet. Yeah, keto is proportionally a high-fat diet. But if I looked purely at grams of fat that I consumed before keto and after keto, I'd be willing to bet that I'm consuming about the same amount of fat, but the fats that I am consuming are far healthier fats for me. I've gotten away from a lot of those processed fats, the corn oil, the vegetable oil, the peanut oil, the canola oil, etc. And they'll talk to you about the keto flu and keto breath, and they'll tell you that your lipid panel is going to be just destroyed. And no argument will work. You can show them your lipid panel. You can show them that you're off of drugs for blood pressure. You can tell them how great you feel. It's not going to matter to these folks. And at the end, the argument they always fall back on is, well, no one really knows the long-term harm you're causing yourself. Mic drop. That's their moment, and they walk away because they don't want to hear anymore. So I have found that if you are going to talk to people about keto, it's best to sort of ease in. So I'll start with something like, 
Mostly what I've done is just dialed back on some of the less healthy and more processed carbs, you know, the breads, the pastas, that sort of stuff. And, you know, trying to make sure I'm eating healthy vegetables and healthy fats and a moderate amount of protein. If you do something like that, that seems to satisfy most folks. The keto curious will probe a little bit deeper. And you can just sort of gradually take them along and then find out if they're all on board or not. Anyhow, that's my strategy. Your mileage may vary. For those of you experienced keto folks, I would love to read what advice you would give to someone who's just getting into keto. What are some of the lessons learned, mistakes you made, things you're glad you did? Post it down in the comments. And that puts a bow on my transformation series. I'm going to go on vacation now. Thanks for watching.